Hello and welcome to today's video. So this time we're going to be taking our third look at Judge Dredd and 2000 AD related graphic novels. And this is the final part of the graphic novels. This is the tail end ones from the late 80s into the early to mid 90s. So that's what we're going to be having a look at today. And I've got some absolutely brilliant ones to go through with you, including a really nice uh, French hardback Judge Anderson uh, graphic novel. So without further ado, then sit back, relax and let's get to it. Okay, so this is the first batch. Now, the way I've split these up is by publisher. So all the ones that we've seen in the first two videos have been uh, published s exclusively by Titan Books, and they started all the way back in 1981. So these first few that we've got are actually Titan Books Stroke 2000 AD. So these were partly published by uh, the comic itself. So they were like in a bit of a partnership. And we've actually got four of these uh, to go through. So this first one is a, a nice little classic um, Garth Ennis, Carlos Escazera standalone. And uh, one of the key turning points now is that they're not um, predominantly um, adapting uh, taking lots of single uh, issues and putting them into uh, into one graphic novel, like the Chronicles of Judge Dredd. These are very much more in the now familiar graphic novel format, where it's a one complete story in the book. So that's this first one here, which is Death Aid. And in the same format again, we have uh, Emerald Isle, um, another Garth Ennis written written one with Steve Dillon, Glenn Fabry cover there. This is when Dredd goes to Ireland, of course. And we have another one, which is Goodnight Kiss. Once again, Garth Ennis, who at this time, by this time, was already quite uh, well known in the world of comics. Um, this, one's, this one's actually got a publication date of 2001. And then one more, which I've got in my collection, which is also Titan and 2080, is this complete ballad of Halo Jones. So originally Titan had published this one in three individual volumes. Um, very similar to how the uh, original strip played out in 2000 AD. But this is the full full lot in one complete volume, and it's certainly the, the, the best way to read this one. Um, absolutely great. A classic Halo Jones. So I've just got those four, which come under this weird banner of being Titan books and 2000 AD. Now, the next little batch I've got were marked as solely being published by 2000 AD only. So it is a bit of a convoluted and complicated story, this. But these ones here are just, just got that little 2000 AD books logo. And uh, this very thin little one here is Judge Dredd in America, what some people regard as one of the greatest uh, Judge Dredd strips ever. Um, it is absolutely fantastic, for sure. And uh, certainly a nice way to read this one. Um, and this particular volume um, has a... 19, I was originally published in the magazine. It gives you the dates there between October 1990 and April 1991. And this particular graphic novel was in September 1991. So they didn't waste much time in getting this uh, this story from the magazine out into a graphic novel form. Now, the next one I've got is a bit of a curiosity because I've got two copies of it. And I thought, well, that's a bit weird. Why have I got a couple of copies of the same graphic novel, Tale of the Dead Man, which in itself is an absolutely fantastic book. But these are both first edition. But if you have a look on the spine, there is a subtle difference in that the one underneath just says Tale of the Dead. And the one on top of it says Tale of the Dead Man. So the bottom one, I would imagine, is in actual fact, the true first printing. And this, yeah, it says first edition, July 1991, but it's got a number one there. However, I think this one is exactly the same. Yeah, it says this one's the first print, but I would say almost certainly that that initial misprint, just Tale of the Dead, was corrected. And that's actually the true first edition. And then that second one, even though it says it's the first edition, in actual fact, it's not. So uh, there's one for you to go and check to see which one you've actually got. Now, this next one by 2000 ebooks is definitely one of my all-time favourite Judge Anderson strips, and that's Shambhala. Um, I particularly like the artwork 
of Arthur Ransom. Um, he did a lot of uh, great strips around this time, including a lot of Doctor Who stuff, which is really underrated. Um, but yeah, so Shambhala, one of my easily one of my favourite George Anderson strips, and I'm not sure uh, if you're a fan yourself, but um, you can see by this artwork just how great it is. Now, um, when I used to have my uh, shop, Purple Haze, back in Plymouth many years ago, um, we used to sell stacks of 2000 AD and we had all the graphic novels. And we used to trade a lot with um, some French dealers who would come over on the ferry. And one time they came over and they brought this one. Now, this is a what they call Biddy. This is a, a hardback graphic novel. Um, and it was published in France by A.R. Boris. And this is under the series Legends of Mega City, but it is actually a hardback of Shambhala. Now, it's not a Arthur Ransom cover, which is a shame, but it is the original graphic novel. That's quite nice. Um, in lovely hardback. And just look at the quality of that. Really, really nice uh, printing on this one. Absolutely fantastic graphic novel. In fact, similar to the French artist um, Jean Girard, uh, Mobius. So uh, maybe that's why this one got its own French edition. But I really, really like that one. I can't imagine there's many of uh, those French editions around. Now, we move on to another publisher, which is Mandarin. So Mandarin were another British publisher who've briefly uh, reprinted um, some Judge Dredd graphic novels. And this first one we got from them is Raptor. $5.99 full color again all of these have been full color so far and uh, except uh, Halo Jones of course which is black and white and this one is dated 92 so although it's Mandarin it, it, it does say it's a Fleetway edition all right so once again this is a slight crossover and these will work their way into the Fleetway books so we've got a few in this series we've got Raptor we've got Babes in Arms this is obviously where, you know, acclaimed writer Darth Ennis cut his teeth, like so many of the uh, big names in writing these days, particularly comic book writing. Darth Ennis, of course, went on to do so many big things. Most recently, The Boys of His, which has been adapted by Amazon. Um, Book of the Dead. This is a Grant Morrison one. Another author who went on to become absolutely massive in the, the world of comics and graphic novels. Not one of my favourite strips, that, but still, still nice to have. And um, Democracy Now!, which, once again, a bit of a classic. Very, very thin here. Look how thin this graphic novel is. Um, they only wanted a fiver for it, for $4.99. So that's not bad, but, I mean, um, I don't know. It's a 20-minute read, and it's all over, isn't it? Um, there you go. So they were, those themselves came out very, very early 90s. Now, Mandarin published those under license from Fleetway and that is actually the next publisher we've got so it's Fleetway books so the first lot is a series of four and it's Judge Dredd Judge Dredd's Crime File so this came out as a series of four volumes um really really nice Brian Bolland covers um these are dated 89 Fleetway 1989. So this was have been just as the Titan books finished, these books came out. And I said there's four of them in total. They were £3.50 each. And these do have classic uh, classic strips reprinted in them. All in full colour. My guess is on some of these that these have actually come from reprinting from some of the uh, Judge Red Annuals by the looks of it. Yes. Yes, indeed. Classic Hiscus era there. Number one. See, they marked the number to, in the uh, eagle emblem at the top there. Well, that's got a rogue trooper back backup strip. That's interesting. And here's number two. Ooh, super flab on. Excellent. One of the fatty strips. Brilliant. My, my favourites. Oh, the big itch. Yeah, I do remember that. That was another one. Excellent stuff, super flea, yes. Oh, fantastic stuff. So that was those. Now these are 
fleet weight so that's them and then we've got some more of these so these are once again very thin volumes by fleet weight we've got metal fatigue some earlier strips but in full color again which is quite nice we've got hall of justice i noticed that these are called definitive editions so if these are the best that they ever did you know maybe they took those early strips and really colored them well i don't know but it certainly appears that way of course all of these by this point have been reprinted in america and with by eagle comics so they had all been given the color treatment future grime her uh, crime even let's get in some of the earlier strips colored in And the last one in this run, which is Bad Science of these definitive editions. So they didn't go too long. But then I've got one more Fleetway published one, which is this, which is Old Marlon Shakespeare, Chopper, and it's Song of the Surfer. Quite a nice big book, this, for $5.99 reading this at the time week by week as it was published pretty cool stuff went on a bit but still still a good one and then also connected with this but not actually a graphic novel is this one which is really good actually it's um uh, judge read the mega history and um, this was like the untold story it said um it, this was by leonard publishing but um they did have loads of assistance from many uh, 2080 artists and writers um, and previous editors and things like that. So as you can see, it's really well illustrated. It's the sort of history of Dread and also what else was happening um, at the time of Dread's uh, inception in other British comics. So you see battle and uh, things like that action. Um, so yeah, worth it, worth tracking that one down if you can, because you don't see that very often. Now, I'm just going to, put those to one side because by far of this last batch the biggest publisher by far was Hamlin. Now Hamlin uh, been around a long time and they published absolutely stacks of uh, graphic novels in the UK um, and they did their fair share of Judge Dredd ones. So um, what first one we got here is um, Scorpion Deaths. Now the good thing about these is they didn't shy away from um, producing the beefier stories in one big book so some of these are actually really really decent sizes and uh, you actually feel like you're getting a decent story for your money something you can get your teeth into and uh, these are once again the tail end of the uh, the 1990s it tells you exactly where they've been reprinted so this one uh, was in progs 1101 to 1110 um, and scorpion dance was what was that 112 Five to one one three two, so that's the first one. I've got a Judge Dread one, a Judge Anderson one here, which is Satan, another uh, lovely Arthur Ransom Judge Anderson strip. So like Shambhala earlier, absolutely love this guy's style, uh, fantastic. I remember seeing pages and pages of these of this original artwork um, at the shows I used to go to um, in the nineties and early two thousands, and they're only about. 20 30 pound a page uh, i wish i picked some up then because uh, but you know with artwork i always feel you've got to have the room to actually display it to, to give it justice and all the artwork that i've ever owned i've never really had it out on display much um this next one here blind justice john wagner and john burns you can see these have got a really good format since the original prog size had changed these all had to be pretty big Ah, yes, so Doomsday for Mega City 1. So this was another, the start of the epics. That's some really nice artwork in this one. And a nice chunky sized book as well. So, uh, you know, once again, I think you get your value for money. So you got Doomsday for Mega City 1, and then Doomsday for Dread. Another massive, massive multi part story into graphic novel form and this is there's some real good stuff in here that's for sure then we've got George Red Fetish that really stylized artwork what was his name Siku is a Japanese or Chinese 
artist. Now I'm just going to pull them to one side because they give us a bit more room. Now we've got the pit. I remember this one quite well. So again, a real big book here. You know, several, you know, uh, maybe 150 to 200 pages. So well worth your money. Than some of those other ones we looked at earlier. And one of the epics, which I really loved, not as much as um, the Apocalypse War, of course, but I really did love this, was uh, Necropolis. Absolutely fantastic. I did feel it went on just a tiny bit too long and that perhaps they were trying a little bit too hard to have another sort of Apocalypse War mega epic. But I don't think they did bad on this. And um, certainly it was, uh, it was a valiant effort um, at producing another memorable epic story and this graphic novel is excellent the, with the whole lot in in the one like that it's certainly um certainly to be commended big thick one that one and we got a few more so we got um wilderlands i don't remember much about this one but once again i'm actually enormous uh, graphic novel really good value for money this one this is a bit of a mixture of artists and stories that have been pulled together by the look of it, like the old Chronicles of Dread, rather than it being one um, one massive strip. It appears they're all in the Cursed Earth, so maybe that's why we've got the uh, Wilderlands cover. And then the last Hamlin one we've got is this one, which is The Three Amigos, which is... Uh, Really nice uh, jacket on that one. Uh, this must be one of their slightly earlier ones. Um, this feels slightly different format to those later ones that we've looked at. Got some great stuff in there. I'm just seeing when this one was actually uh, got, which what the publishing date was on this one. It does say 1996. Um, just a couple more to look at now. So the last hamlin one we've got this actually this hardback and this is the fantastic um full edition of uh slain the horned god which is absolutely fantastic so pat mills simon bisley in an awesome uh one-off volume of the entire strip in hardback a real epic way to have this one comes highly highly recommended this i'm sure you can still get this without too much trouble um and uh, yeah that slain the horn absolutely recommended that one now this edition um 1998 so we are looking at quite a few years ago now you know it's uh, 20 years since that one came out however i'm sure you'll still be able to find it and the very last one i've got which was also published by hamlin so i thought i'd include it now um is the a to z of judge dread um by mike butcher this is a uh, got a new cover by cliff robinson and uh, this once again um just has a look at the uh the different characters and strips um and history of the character in an a to z sort of format which isn't bad. It's probably not going to tell the uh, the most you know hardened fan exactly what's what, but it is quite nice in that. Say like Judge Giant, he was one of my favourite characters for sure. Um, what is quite nice is it's got all the Judge Giant appearances, so all the different progs that he came in up to when he died in Prog Two Forty Two, which was I remember being absolutely epic at the time, um, and see also Block Mania and Cadet Judge Giant. So. Good stuff, but obviously massively out of date now. But for fans of the early years of 2008, it's, uh, it comes recommended. And this one was first published in 1995. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this uh, final look at the Judge Dredd graphic novels. Now, I have got one more video to come, and that's the, uh, the Judge Dredd oblong strip reprints from the Daily Star. Um, I've got five volumes of those plus like an omnibus one. And then of course you've got all the Judge Dredd uh, annuals. So that'll be the subject of a final video which will be coming fairly soon. So if you have enjoyed this video, do give it a thumbs up. And if you've not already, do please subscribe for regular vintage content like this going forward. Thank you once again, and I'll see you soon. Bye.